Break the Isolation webinar hosted by Amy B. My name is Jeff Higgins from the Amy B Federal Office. We are here to help you during this time. The resources that we have available are at amyb.edu.au forward slash here dash to help. Uh, that, uh, email, that address will be available elsewhere. Uh, we'll make sure you find out about it. This is our first webinar, so please bear with us if we have some technical dis difficulties. Um, and also during this webinar, you can actually ask questions as well. We'd like you to, and at the end of, the, uh, at the end of this uh, webinar, we'll try and answer some of those questions for you. I'm joined today by Roseanne Hammer. Roseanne has been a piano teacher for 24 years, like some of you have, working in Adelaide colleges and her own private studio. Roseanne holds degrees in music and education from the University of Adelaide and is very much engaged in the music community, is a former council member of the MTA of South Australia, part secretary of recitals, uh, a past secretary, I should say, of recitals Australia, and one of the committee for the 2017 Australian Piano Pedagogy Conference, or the APPC, as most of, most of you would know very well. Roseanne is not just a teacher, she's an active concert performer an adjudicator, a masterclass technician, and a piano examiner for Amy B. Welcome, Roseanne. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Jeff, and um, I want to say welcome and hello to everyone that's watching as well. Um, I'm guessing there's a lot of fellow instrumental teachers and piano teachers out there, so um, I send a shout out to all of you. Hi there. Good. Um, I want to start by asking you, uh, how much of your teaching is now online? I, uh, you know, when did you start? I guess it was very recently, but what prompted it and what were the catalysts uh, to get you to start teaching online from your lovely looking studio there? <laughs> Thank you. Yes, welcome. Welcome to my place. Um, yes, yeah, so I am now completely online with my piano teaching. Um, I have went fully online as of last Wednesday. Uh, I should tell you that before that, I had never done any online piano teaching. So this is a brand new world for me. Um, and I'm imagining that that's the case for a lot of other people too. Um, I've been speaking to a lot of other teachers, you know, my colleagues and such, and, and they are at various levels of uh, transference to this new form. Uh, but yes, I, I went fully online last week. There were, I suppose, a few things that led me to do that. Um, one of them I think was the most important, perhaps, uh, my own instinct about it. Um, I suppose just because we're in this situation at the moment, which is very rapidly changing, we're getting some mixed messages as to um, maybe what we should do, the best thing to do is, I, it was really my instinct that, that led me to, to realise that I'm a person that could um, create this sort of distance between me and, and, uh, mm. student and, and protect them in that way and protect myself in that way. So um, that's what led me. I suppose communication with parents as well. Um, perhaps other teachers are finding this too, that, that parents are starting to text or email and say, you know, what's happening with instrumental lessons? Perhaps they're very conscious of the fact that we're in close proximity um, to our students and that, that creates a little bit of risk for both of us at this time. Um, so listening to that advice, I had heard that the universities were going online with their practical lessons too. At least I know the conservatorium here in Adelaide did. So I, I felt that it was the time. Mm. So it would, be, it, would be, it would be fair to say that uh, you'd been planning this or thinking about it for quite a while and then suddenly shifted very quickly, just very recently, into the online space. Yes and no, I wasn't thinking about it for a long time at all. It happened, <laughs> not my decision about it. Uh, in fact, maybe 24 hours before I did this, I had just sent an email to all of my parents and students saying, yes, lessons are going ahead as usual this week and we'll be um, practicing social distancing. So I'll be at a distance from the piano and we're all gonna wash our hands before and after every lesson. And I had written this email and sent it. And then it was really, you know, something, as I say, it, it, it hit me rather hard and I thought, no, I'm going to listen to my instincts about this and, um, and now transfer to this style of teaching. So 24 hours later, they had a brand new email in their inbox saying this is what's happening and, and the response was actually excellent. Yeah. Great. Well, uh, maybe we can move on then. There would have been a fair bit of procedure that you had to think about as to how you're going to do this. Um, and 
in the ability to switch your students to the online platform. Can you tell us a bit about that, uh, the, the processes that you actually used? Okay. Uh, all right, maybe the, the most important one is one that I've sort of mentioned already. I think uh, it's really important to get on the front foot um, with your students and with you know any schools that you're working with, express to them your reasons for wanting to change. I mean, that that's the, the first step was that I sent an email to everyone. I made myself available to talk about it um, with you know the students with the families with other staff with um as i say music departments i was working within um and i, I think that maybe is the number one uh step after that i just started to um talk to some people about what they had done in the past with online lessons which programs they had used uh, i've heard about several some people were using skype um, I'm using the Zoom program. Um, I know there's, a, there's another Microsoft uh, Teams. There's many, many platforms that you can use. And I think the best part about that is that um, they're very easy to use. Um, they've taken almost no setup time. I mean, not that I'm just advocating for Zoom. I'm sure there's many other programs that work, but the only thing this program requires is an email address, uh, no personal information at all. So it was ideal for using with students, um, you know, for their protection. They could just, you know, uh, register with an email address and they had my email address and that's how this is working. Um, also, because so many of them have laptops, uh, you know, using them at school, school laptops, they all have webcams and microphones inbuilt. They all have their own tech already inbuilt, ready to go. And that's basically what we've been using in this first week initially, just the basic, basic laptop, webcam in the laptop, microphone in the laptop. I've got a slightly different webcam so that, you know, if I want to demonstrate something at the piano, I can bring that camera a little closer and just show in a bit better detail. But um, yeah. that's all we did. Hmm. Uh, I think it's worth parting, uh, letting everyone know that we will have... Uh information available on all of the different platforms in a much more uh, 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 bigger detail so you can find it easy to sign up to uh, online platforms such as Zoom. So schools are a very big part of the music education uh, in this country, um, or any country for that matter. How have the schools, have the schools supported you and helped you at all? And maybe you can just talk a bit about that. Uh, yes. Um... I work at two different uh, sort of senior colleges and they have been very supportive, although they've had very different responses to me. In one school, I was the one that was um, initiating the online um, concept. I was the first one to do it. And in another school, I, I was directed um, to do it, you know, a few days after that. Um, but what, what's quite interesting to me is that when I've spoken to other colleagues, um, just the variety of what they've been instructed to do and the varying levels of support they've had has blown my mind. I mean, there's quite a lot of disparity as to, you know, what people have been asked to do. For example, um, I know one teacher who uh, has been asked to come and teach piano lessons at school in her normal teaching room while the students are at home. So she has to go on the premises and actually conduct the lessons there. there as she normally would, and the students are remote. Um, I've been teaching from home. My students at the college have been coming into our normal piano room at school in their normal scheduled time, setting up their laptop and having their lesson at school while I'm, while I'm here. Um, I, I know, unfortunately, of another school who has actually said to all instrumental teachers that uh, instrumental lessons must cease uh, mm. until the notice, which is, which is pretty rough. <laughs> Um, I, I'm really not sure what's behind that, but I'm sure I'm sure they have their reasons. And then just yesterday, one of my schools mentioned that they would prefer us to record the lessons that we're giving our students online as a um, student or I don't know the term, it's something like a child protection um, measure. Mm. Uh, so that's the only place I've been asked to do that with. So I'm guessing yeah. it's just everyone must uh, have huge array of instructions right now yeah. yes i'm sure yeah and i think uh, for everyone watching this out there that uh, our belief is that schools have got different rules different administrations so it's something we will address in the future the other part of the equation for music education of course is parents um roseanne so uh how have we found the reaction from parents 
Okay, I would say that's a really that's a really rather important question for everyone at the moment. Um, I am really fortunate in that basically all of my families have had a really positive response to this. A lot of families have um, even written and, and indicated that they're really grateful that their child has been able to continue their learning in this way. Um, again, in talking to some other teachers, I've heard slightly different responses than that. Um, some people are really skeptical about how um, useful these lessons would be. Um, and that's really understandable. I don't think you can really force people to do something that they're not willing to do. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. impossible to do. But if I could say anything to the instrumental teachers out there, it would be, um, don't you be the one to, um, to initially say that to parents because you really need to give this a try. It, it's actually quite productive. Um, the lessons are working really well. The kids are very adaptable. Um, it's in line basically with what all schools, all education systems are doing throughout the world. So it's not like you're trying to do something completely radical. Um, it, it's such an important thing that we do with those students. You, I don't need to tell you that. Um, and if we can try and keep that normality for them, uh, I think it's really worth putting yourself out there and giving this a go before you know, having a negative spin on it, which will certainly rub off to parents. So as I say, front yeah. with communication and then give it a go. It's worthwhile giving it a go. Yeah, yeah. look, that's uh, very well said. I'm sure, sure the teachers listening to this will understand that. And I'm sure we have a few parents out there as well. Um, so I was going to ask you, um, how productive at the end of the day do you think an online lesson option is? Difficult question to answer, but I guess there are changes here between having a student right next to you and an online student. So how do you feel at the end of the lesson, how productive it's been for, for the student? It's funny you say, how do I feel at the end of the lesson, Jeff, because I feel exhausted. <laughs> anyone who's sure doing you this do. Already, yeah, anyone that's doing this already, I think you will notice this takes a lot more energy than normal. Um, I'm finding myself much more high energy in the lesson. I thought I was high energy before, but I wasn't. This is a new level of um, high energy piano lessons. Um, also, we're concentrating very hard because um, the sound quality, you know, we can say it's fine and it's good. It's good enough. It's not great. <laughs> no one's going to pretend it's great. Um, hopefully, there'll be ways to improve that in the near future and we'll all get a bit more savvy with our tech and can help ourselves and students more there. The lesson is productive. Um, it's very different, obviously, to a one-to-one -one lesson. It has its strengths. I would say the strengths are the students needing to be more independent. Um, I've always been aware that students are subliminally um, reacting to me next to them. For example, if if I, you know, if I move my posture or my position in a way, they instinctively copy it, which I've always thought was a good thing. Um, but perhaps they were doing it on a sort of a subconscious level, whereas now they're having to be a lot more conscious about what they're doing. They have to be very organised. They have to pay attention. <laughs> they really have to listen and not just tune out and, you know, be there for the ride of the piano lesson. Um, so I'm seeing some strong, strong positives um, in conducting the lessons. Um, for negative aspects, I mean, you know, the internet connection has to be strong. So if you've got a student at home that's um, not got great internet capacity, can I say, or their instrument at home isn't terrific, that's, um, that can cause a bit of an issue. That's worth it to uh, talk about, I would say. Um, yeah. And obviously not being able to play in ensemble with your student. So it's, it's kind of difficult to play along you know, maintain pulse while they're playing or um, certain kinds of explanation. I'm sure the teachers know what I'm talking about there. Yeah. So on the, uh, I was going to ask you about that. So there must be some negative aspects to this whole thing. And uh, I guess you've had some feedback from your students um, when you've gone ahead with the lesson online. What would you say, would it, rather than say negative, what, what would you say are the differences or the problems that uh, students are encountering and, and you as well? Mm, okay. So the honest to goodness response from the students, 
uh, has been positive. They've said, oh, that was quite fun. Oh, that was easier than I thought it would be. Oh, yeah, that works. And, you know, I've even said to them, you, you know, you tell me the truth. What Can you understand me well enough? Can you see me? What do you think? Shall we do this next week? Everybody says yes. Everybody says yes. It's I'm, I'm overwhelmed and completely in awe of the adaptability of these kids. Um, so from that point of view, I count myself pretty lucky. I count all of us very lucky with that. And I hope everyone has a similar experience. Where I have had an issue, again, was where there was an internet connection and the student couldn't hear me very well. That's a real problem. I don't know how we can in good faith offer lessons when the connection is not good. Um, that's something to deal with there. Um, but, you know, one, one other positive, I was just thinking about this yesterday. I, I had a student at one of the colleges who's quite a new student to me and I hadn't yet met their parents. Uh, she's at home, having her schooling at home, and it was so lovely that she had her lesson at home and her mother was able to come and watch her piano lesson for the first time. Um, and I think that's going to happen with a lot of students. All of a sudden, pianos come back into the home. Mum and dad can watch what you're doing. You're a part of the family. Um, this, is, this, is a great, this is a great thing, I think. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So... Um... From the point that you decided to go online, you must have been then looking at where do I get the information for all this? How do I find the information about, uh, first of all, going online? And did you, where did you source that from? Was that from your friends, teachers, colleagues, or surfing the net or, or, or what? Uh, okay, this could be something to do with my personality more than anything else, but I, the first thing I did was I did it. <laughs> you know, I just went online. I spoke to a student I'm pretty close to and just said, look, can we just try this? I just want to see if this is viable or not. Um, that, that was my starting point. And it gave me the confidence then to, you know, start looking for information that applied to me, to ask other colleagues. I would say our colleagues are pretty much the best resource that we have at the moment. I've had conversations with teachers the past few evenings, every night about how they went at school, what, how their program is going, what tech they're using. Someone told me yesterday about um, an audio equaliser program that you can um, install on your laptop and it improves the quality. So I'm going to give that a try on the weekend. I'm going to install it and see if that helps. So your, your colleagues are your best resource. And now, you know, so many people are working together here. There's going to be a lot online. I've registered for a webinar tonight <laughs> about online teaching. Um, so the internet, of course, and your colleagues are the best way, and doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Okay, well, look, um, I just wondered, well, I, th I think you've touched on this a couple of times, but uh, um, what, is, what is the message to uh, teachers? Teachers are the, uh, are the most important people in this process. Uh, we, we need all teachers to keep on teaching kids and teaching them, teaching them so that they can take their exams. So. Um, what would you say is the, is the, is the key message, Roseanne, or the key messages in, even in this respect? Yeah, I mean, as I say, give it a go. I, do you know, I've been feeling very grateful because um, our, we are able to do our job online. Be assured we are. And so in, in some ways we are the lucky ones. Um, and we do have a really important job um, you know, we are important with the students, of course, they are really important. If, if our lessons aren't quality for them, no, it's more about that, you know, making sure we've got good lessons going on here. Um, the, the message, apart from give it a go, talk to each other, let's keep connected with each other. There's a lot of us in exactly the same boat here. Um, we can help each other, we can do this. Um, I, I have concern for us, um, you know, students and families are happy for this to continue while they're able to pay for lessons. I wonder what's going to happen when the um, situation is that unemployment it becomes so high that people are really struggling to pay for lessons as usual. That's going to be a conversation for the future, I would say. Um, but overall... Okay. Just hope everyone stays very positive and um, keeps doing the great job that, that they're doing. Yeah. Okay, so we've got a couple of questions that have come in. Um, thank you for everyone that did put a question through. I'll just uh, flick to those questions now, Roseanne. Um, somebody's asked uh, if you can just play your piano for a couple of, couple of for a minute or something, so they can have a demo. For, for a minute, but so you can hear the sound quality, sure. Should be points for for anyone who knows where that comes from. <laughs> 
Um, another, another question from Ismini. Uh, do you teach online lessons to children under seven years old? If so, how do you make it work? Do the parents then get involved? This, this is a great question. Um, I have mostly senior students, but I teach three um, younger, so I would say eight years and under. I have uh, an eight-year-old, a six-year-old, uh, two six-year-olds actually as well. Students, but they're children of musicians actually. Um, those have been the most difficult lessons to conduct because it is far more difficult for those young students to concentrate on the screen and then come here and then look here and then here. So I've been lucky enough to have parents who have been supportive enough just to stay and say, oh, are you listening? What did Roseanne say? What did you do? And then that they've been listening to me and sort of enforcing what I've been saying. Um, so that's been my experience of that. Yeah, probably more one-on-one, -on -one, I imagine, that stage, isn't it, really? Yes, well, I yeah. have all one-on-one -on -one lessons, yes. Okay, a uh, bit of trivia for you. Somebody picked up that you were playing the opening bars of Claire de Lune. Uh -huh. um, oh, do you know, it's not Claire de Lune, it's the minuet from Sweet Burger Mask, actually. Well, so I'm, glad we, I'm glad we've clarified that. Uh, question from Michael. Uh, have you had to develop and communicate any specific policies for your studio? Great question. Not at this stage, although uh, I plan on staying in contact about uh, those sorts of changes. Um, I would I would be likely to um, I'd be likely to change my policy if I'm getting feedback that things aren't going well or that people are in financial distress. Um, but because the feedback's been so good and it's been quite a seamless transition so far, I, I haven't really seen the need to do it. But it's an interesting point. Mm. Yeah, and have you conducted any group lessons at all? Are they, are they all one-on-one -on -one lessons yours, are they? No, I haven't, but I spoke to uh, one of the piano uh, instructors at the conservatorium yesterday who, who did a, a group lesson of 10, it was a practical keyboard lesson with 10 people. Um, it was obviously a, like an ensemble lesson. Uh, so apparently it can be done. <laughs> so um, again, give it a go. I personally haven't done that. Right, okay. Well, look, uh, thank you, Roseanne. It's been a pleasure to talk to you. Um, thank you for your time as well. That's the important uh, uh, factor uh, because we know teachers are busy. They teach all day, teaching well into the night as well. Thank you for everybody for joining us for, uh, today. There will be further webinars. Our next webinar will feature David Lockett, who's the Chief Examiner for Amy B. Um, in the meantime, uh, thank you. I hope this has been helpful and uh, this is also recorded so you can watch it through again. But in the meantime, thank you, Roseanne Hammer. You stay well, everyone. Thank you.